Hello everyone, welcome to Edukemi's YouTube channel. Myself Karuna Mishra, and I will be continuing the government scheme series uh, within the financial sector. Now we have already uh, given you two to three videos on the finance schemes, and today is the last video, the fourth video, and this shall cover all the important schemes which are in news or had been in news to some extent in the last two years. The rationale was not to cover all the schemes. but to uh, skim them out and take out the important areas uh, from all the sectors so that you are ready for your prelims we recommend you to go through these videos the idea was to design smaller videos so that the revision can be done in a swift manner uh, already government schemes uh, have been covered uh, in the agriculture sector the infrastructure sector has also been almost covered and today being the last uh, scheme of finance we will be starting with health and welfare separately so that you can have a quick review before your uh, or quick revision before your prelims so uh, all the best uh, for all the prelims going student now coming to the schemes which we will be taking today uh, i'll be covering three schemes from the finance and industry commerce industry sector so uh, the first one is the iconic make in india Uh, you cannot complete a government scheme series without talking about make in india since its inception since its inception it has been in news uh, it is a very beautiful initiative the second uh, scheme which i am taking is from the export or uh, trade and export in which uh, the government has tried to create infrastructural setup to uh, you know fill the gaps which were there uh, hampering the export of india the third scheme is e santa which is regarding the aquaculture or aquaculture and how uh, e santa platform is acting as the cupid between the farmers and the marketplace and can be seen as a potential to bring all the fisheries and other products at one place and basically as an auction ground for the farmers and as well as for the buyers so uh, without further ado let us take up our first scheme which is the make in india by ministry of finance one of the most uh, iconic step taken by government of india now a very brief review uh, whenever you have your economy classes you are told that uh, the problem with india is we do not have a strong manufacturing we directly jumped from agricultural sector or agriculture dom dominated economy to service dominated economy the ideal should be that first agriculture then the manufacturing sector should be uh, made strong and then the service sector becomes the dominant sector now what happened is we directly jumped and somehow the manufacturing sector or the secondary sector was not well developed so this is one way government is trying to rectify that that we are trying to increase the share of manufacturing sector in our gdp and we are simply telling the world if you want to sell something to us we are one of the biggest markets you have to do one thing you have to bring your factories in india and you have to make in india so one is that dimension the second dimension is we are also telling our companies that we will give you incentives but do not take your factories or manufacturing units out of india and try to make as well as procure now this is for the government and for the private players as well not just make in india but also procure from india so procure from the agencies or the manufacturing units which are making their products in india so this is a larger picture now coming to the specifics the way scheme is asked is they ask you about the aim they ask you about the benefits or the features of the scheme so coming to that this was in news so we have discussed the aim now let us understand why this uh, scheme was in news it has been in news since inception no denying that but the defense ministry has now earmarked 64% of its modernization fund so uh, defense is undergoing modernization and now defense ministry has said that out of the 100% 64% should be the capital uh, uh, under the capital acquisition budget should be purchased or the goods should be purchased from the domestic sector so this will further give boost to the make in india initiative uh, if you remember in 2018 government had announced a defense corridor in the bundelkhand region now bundelkhand region is considered one of the most backward areas in mp uh, and up belt it, it is a border area of madhya pradesh and uttar pradesh and some parts of rajasthan so uh, if your map work is strong i i think you can remember that 
तो गवर्नमेंट हैड अनाउंस एंड इट हैज सिक्स नोड्स चित्रकूट अलीगढ़ आगरा देन यू हैव कानपुर एंड लखनऊ ऑल्सो सो दीज आर द सिक्स नोड्स और सिक्स एरियाज विच शैल बी डेवलप्ड विद इन द डिफेंस कॉरिडोर ऑफ बुंदेलखंड so there also i am now promoting the make in india so within make in india it is the defense sector which has done a lot of work for promotion now coming to the main you know uh, purposes or features of the scheme the first one is that i want to increase or the government wants to increase the manufacturing sector growth between 12 to 14% per annum so i want to have or the government wants to have the growth in the manufacturing sector to the tune of 12 to 14% second is government aims at creating 100 million additional jobs by the year 2022 so if you have manufacturing this is the reason blue collar jobs form one of the biggest segments of any economy blue collar jobs are the jobs which are said to be from the manufacturing sector in the factory so people who are working in the factory are called as the blue collar people or blue collar job area so i am trying to create more than 100 million jobs by make in india initiative third is uh, another area of concern and especially from the employment point of view is the rural and the urban poor so government's aim is to create uh the skill set among the rural migrants and urban poor so that the agenda of inclusive growth can be achieved apart from that the aim is to increase the share of manufacturing in the gdp from the current 16% to 25% by the year 2022 so i want to increase the share within the gdp from 16% to 25% fifth point being that with all this i want to ensure the government wants to ensure the sustainability of growth and also take care of the uh, environment and the manufacturing unit or manufacturing sector of india shall be global competitive and the standard should meet the global standard so this is the vision or these are the features of make in india team now coming to the next scheme very important is trade infrastructure for export scheme which is by ministry of commerce and industry ministry of commerce and industry is the nodal ministry under which the trade infrastructure for export scheme is in now you have to understand before we go into this uh, the thing is that it is not that we do not have good manufacturing and therefore we have more imports than exports that can be one factor but there are many bottlenecks and these bottlenecks when are infrastructural in nature there is not much that the industry can do these kind of things can only be resolved by the will of the government so what does the scheme basically envisage it envisages to assist central and state government agencies for the creation of appropriate infrastructure you have to create the right infrastructure if you want to promote export when i talk about uh, infrastructure let us say i am making dolls all right i am making dolls let's say in delhi but the demand for dolls in it is in japan air travel is very expensive so i need to ship these dolls uh, on a boat a ship or a cargo ship now i need a good corridor or road network so that i can send the goods in the timely fashion to the nearest port so i need one good infrastructure what what infrastructure need here is road connectivity second is there should be a good ports international ports where the storage facility should be there where i should be uh, you know ensured that the product shall not let's say Uh, it won't be wet in the rain it won't be going down the drain i should have that surety so that kind of infrastructure should be there loading and unloading proper uh, infrastructure should be there and this connectivity is where government rules government's rule come so this is what the objective is now if we go by objective the first one is to enhance export competitiveness by bridging gaps in the export infrastructure so this is these are the gaps that i was talking about whenever i am trying to enhance the export the gaps are one financial gaps i should have 
कैपिटल इन्फ्यूजमेंट इन द इकोनॉमी द लोन सिस्टम शुड बी देयर गुड एक्सपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट इम्पोर्ट टैक्सेशन एंड डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ स्कीम शुड बी इन प्लेस द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर शुड बी इन प्लेस सेकेंड इज दैट क्रिएटिंग फोकस्ड एक्सपोर्ट इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर विच वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट फर्स्ट माइल एंड लास्ट माइल कनेक्टिविटी फॉर एक्सपोर्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोजेक्ट यू कैन नॉट हैव अ गुड एक्सपोर्ट फॉर अ लॉन्गर टाइम इफ द लास्ट माइल कनेक्टिविटी फर्स्ट माइल टू लास्ट माइल कनेक्टिविटी इज नॉट देर and fourth and very important is that you should address quality and certification measure so what are the four points the first point is that you should enhance the competitiveness by bridging the gaps first mile and last mile connectivity there should be a dedicated export infrastructure there should be quality and certification measures which to, should take place then only indian exports can compete with the global standards now coming to other features or the component in uh, the scheme there is a provision of creating financial assistance for what for setting up and upgradation first is setting up second is the upgradation of existing infrastructure such as export linkages border hards land customs uh, cold chains dry ports warehousing packaging all of this so whatever is already existing and the creation both should be uh, taken care of and the financial assistance should be provided second is the agencies under the exim policy such as the export promotion councils the commodity boards the scz authorities apex trade bodies all of these should be eligible for the financial support within this third is the central government funding is in the form of grant in aid very important so the funding by the central government is in the form of grant in aid of which 50% of the total uh, equity is the uh, maximum limit so this is also a very welcoming initiative and the ceiling has been kept at a good 20 crore for each infrastructure project so what i learned from this point is central government funding is there in what form in grant in aid how much up to 50% and what is the upper limit 20 crores good out of uh, the total fund 80% of the total equity or 80% of the total has been allotted for north east or north eastern states the himalayan states including jammu and kashmir so i am concerned about the north eastern states and the hilly states himalayan states including jammu and kashmir again it is a union territory now so i can manage that coming to the third scheme a very important which is e santa this is also the symbol of the scheme if you uh, search it so e santa is an electronic platform it it basically stands for electronic solution for augmenting any csa farmers trade in aquaculture or aquaculture whatever you want to pronounce now what is nacsa national center for uh, sustainable aquaculture so that is what nacsa stands for and what is uh, the ministry involved the ministry is commerce and industry and within that the authority is marine products export development or mpda so mpda within the ministry of commerce and industry is the nodal agency here so what is e santa doing e santa is connecting farmer to the exporter so the farmer can freely list their products and quote their prices all right i have so and so fish in so much quantity and this is the price that i will demand fine what is the exporter doing the exporters can list their requirements and choose the products based on their requirements so the exporter is saying all right i need these kind of fish prawns or aquaculture product and this is the price that i am going to pay even if not then this is the quantity that i need and from the list given by the farmers they can choose and they can purchase the products according to their requirement who is giving them the platform e santa is giving them the platform it is available in many languages which helps the local population the most important one we are talking about fishermen right we are talking about aquaculture farmers so i have to provide a platform which operates in the local languages 
also. So basically, as I said, it plays a cupid between the farmer and exporter and everyone is happy. So uh, why everyone is happy? Because it is providing cashless, contactless and paperless electronic trade platform. Second is very important. It is a tool to advertise collectively. It is an advertising tool which collectively advertises the kind of products that the buyer wants as well as the kind of products which the fishermen or fish producing organ organizations are harvest. So it is an advertising, uh, you know, unit for both of them. So even the fish community or fish farming community will know what is the demand in the market as well as the buyer will know that what is the availability in the market. Very important. It shall help people in India and internationally to know about the products which are available and has the potential to ultimately become the auction platform. It can ultimately become the auction platform, shall help in the growth of farmers and fishing. All right, so this is it from the finance scheme sector. Hope uh, these videos have helped you in your revision for your prelims. Till then, keep studying very hard. All the best for your exam. Thank you so much. We'll be coming up with the welfare schemes very soon.